Hey, how you doing? This is John and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're going to look at Action Comics Annual number 12. This is from 2009. This is by Greg Rucker, the writer. Perer, Perez is the artist and this cover is by Renato Guerrez. I think he pronounced it. Um, I stopped collecting Superman in 2015 and then I went and did a, a like a, a inventory of all my comics and I just bought a bunch of back issues to fill in the gaps. So I'll have like, I, I pretty much collected DC from 1985 to, to uh, 2015. So I just wanted to make sure I had a full run of everything. So I bought a bunch of DC comics and I'm currently reading. So I just, I just even though I've had this for a couple of years because my back issue buildup is, is tremendous. I just read this and uh, I figured this, this is, this is pretty much a sequel to Action Comics Annual number 11, which is one of my earlier showcases. Not earlier, but a couple, a couple of weeks ago. And I really, really enjoyed that. By, that was by Jeff Jones and and, uh, and Richard Donner, the guy who did the uh, the Superman movie. So anyway, back to this. All right, let's, let's open it up. Look at this gorgeous cover. So, of course, we're going to be talking about Nightwing and Flame Bird. Now, I don't know as much about uh i i know a lot about superman okay I'm, I'm i'm more than the average bear but i'm i don't know that much about pre-crisis dc minutia so i like i know about flame bird and nightwing i know that it used to be superman and and and, and batman they would go into the bottle city of candor and they would wear these costumes and they would have like adventures and neither one of them had you know superman didn't have superpowers so it was kind of like high-tech Silver Age, goofy, you know, adventure comics. And that was the kind of stuff I hated about DC as a kid. Like, just all all this goofiness and everything like that. Now, as an adult, I find that stuff so charming. You know, it, it's like, like, like an innocence, a bygone innocence that we don't have in comic books anymore. So now, now I'm kind of longing it. So now they're doing like a more modern realistic take on it and uh, <laughs> now it's the opposite now i'm like oh man this is just too realistic for me <laughs> you know i, I kind of want some more of the childlike and you can't please me ladies and gentlemen you cannot please me no but but i i really did enjoy this comic so that, that's why i'm showcasing it for those of you who do not know i tend to only showcase comics that i enjoy i want this to be a positive thing i want this to be why i love comics i want you to you know feel the enthusiasm for comic books that i that i have and, and, and ragging on comics and things like that is is not going to accomplish what i want i want uh, you know I, the older i get the more i want positive things in my life so again the credits are on the last page so we'll get to all the other credits when we, when we get to them so here we got an opening page two panels a lot of dialogue this and i i i, I love it i was like what's going on but it's like reminiscent of a world war ii bomber plane it's got the you know the sexy what, what do they call that mascot on, on, on the ship but there's a specific word for that when you when you paint but uh I, I don't know that specific word so here we have krypton is in distress okay and now dc one of the things i i don't like about dc is once you get used to a certain continuity once you get used to the way it is they change it and i i don't know about you but me, pointing to the same person here, I don't know about you. I don't know who to point to. I don't know where to point. But uh, I, I, we, if you're seriously into comic books, if you're a hardcore collector, that's like an OCD trait. And I, I one of my pet peeves is when people go, I have OCD, when you don't really have it. <coughs> but I will say it's an OCD-like trait. We, we, we want the continuity to fit. We, you know, I, I want complete runs, even if I don't like a particular issue. As an aside, I have a co-worker named Andy. Hi, Andy, if you ever see this. He got rid of one Avengers comic. He got rid of Avengers 102 or 104. I, I forget what number, because he didn't like it. I was like... Yeah. I didn't like it either, but how could you break up your numbers like that? He goes, I don't, I don't want comics I don't like. Well, I totally respect that, and it's probably more healthy than me. I, I could never think of just getting rid of one, you know, have, having 400 issues in a row minus the one issue you didn't like. That would drive me. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So anyway, but I, 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 I want there to be continuity. But I also understand that in 70 years, things are going to change. People are going to forget things. Bad stuff is kind of going to get forgotten about I'm, I'm cool with that but dc kind of just restarts everything all over again so this to me i just read this a couple of days ago so to me is is this the way 
Krypton is now? Like, I, I, I don't know, you know, because things constantly change. And e things even constantly change in a couple, a couple of years that you read the comic. Because this is supposed to be uh, like John Byrne's reimagination of, of, of Krypton. And and uh, even that got changed. And that was 1985. But then again, that's that's a long time ago. You know, what am I, what am I talking about? So here we have Krypton is under attack. And we have Black Zero. Black Zero... Uh, has always been like a terrorist organization or whatever within within Kryptonian society. Here, I don't know if this is a retcon. I, I don't know enough. But now Black Zero is like General Zod, Ursa, and Nan, and all of those who became the Phantom Zone criminals from, from the last annual that I showcased. They're like an elite fighting force, like commandos, and, and they're dealing with, with problems in Kandor on Krypton. This is pre-Bottle City of Kandor. And they're, they're evacuating refugees. Ursa's coming out being here. Black Zero, Zero it's his victory. And what's going on? It's it's kind of like Terminator Judgment Day. See, now this is this is a throwback to the John Byrne era. So I, I don't know if they're making them like the scientists wear this or that's just a fashion, but whatever. I, I do appreciate the, uh, the little nod to the John Byrne because... As much as I've always loved Superman, even before I collected Superman comic books, Superman was my favorite superhero. You know, I was a kid putting a cape on, my, you know, a towel around my neck, running around playing Superman. Always loved Superman. Even when I was a hardcore Marvel zombie, Superman was still my favorite superhero. Even even when I wasn't collecting Superman. And, and I don't think I'm unique in that. I think that's a lot of people. There's something about Superman, the innate good guy, the all-powerful Boy Scout, I, I, the patriotic good guy. I love that. I love that. That's why I, 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 I don't want to watch the boys because I, I, I'm tired of negativity. I'm tired of, of, of deconstruction and I'm tired of everything being broken apart. I want things to be built up now, okay? We're done breaking things apart. Let's build things up. Anyway, back end of rant. So here we have the Brainiac. And again, this is like Terminator. You know, Brainiacs are running around and, and, and causing havoc. I just think that is such a, a, a powerful image. I, I, do, I do love that panel. And just because there's, you know, oppression and you know there's got to be tension in comic books otherwise they're not exciting so here we have the black zero they're going around and like what's going on you know and people are getting killed it's it's high stakes keep in mind these are kryptonians they, that doesn't mean they have superpowers you know under their radiation the, their dormant cells aren't activated which to me starts a whole if i was to write superman i, I would come up okay this is a two-page spread so this woman's daughter is being captured by one of the brainiacs and now they're Ursa's going to uh, uh, retrieve them and fight and everything. And uh, her Black Zero squad is getting taken out. And they're realizing the hopelessness of the situation. Real stakes. He's like, Rao, please, what's going on? And the Brainiac looks at Ursa. Like, look at look, look at that. She's like begging not to be killed. Rao, please. She get, you know, there are no atheists in a foxhole. And the Brainiac just turns around and walks away. Opens up and then starts firing. And what are they doing? sending a signal to uh, the, the mothership, and they're putting a force field around Kandor. So this is the origin of the bottle city of Kandor, or one of the many origins. I, I keep telling you, DC kind of reimagines things. So now they're all trapped. They're prisoners of war. Like This is a nod to the original way that uh, Kryptonians looked. So again, I, I like how they're kind of like marrying all the, uh, all the uh, different versions of Krypton. So now we cut to what happened if, if you get what last year's annual that I showcased a couple of weeks ago. This is Christopher Kent. This is the child. So that was the past. Now we'll come into the future or the present rather. And uh, Christopher Kent is, is imagining his life if he stayed and lived with. So he escaped the Phantom Zone. I don't know how. I, I, I don't have that issue before that. So I, I just had the conclusion to a story that I thought was phenomenal. He, he's living in the, in the Phantom Zone now. So this is him, like, imagining things. What he did was, he, he General Zod and, and Ursa are, and all the Phantom Zone, they, they're just horrible to him. They, you know, he, he was the only child born in, a, in the Phantom Zone by the criminals. And, and a, what's his name? Uh, named Lor Zod by his parents, but he calls himself Christopher. So he's dreaming about what his life would be like if he stayed with the Kent. So he escaped. He was adopted by Clark and Lois. And then he sacrificed his, 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 his basically his life to, uh, to trap all the Phantom Zone criminals back into the, and, and now he's stuck in the Phantom Zone. Now, so he, he's just living a life of torment. And I, I actually got emotional. He's just imagining the way things would be. Now, this is a trope that I can't stand. And as much as I can't stand it, 
oh, what, what am I going to do? It's always happening. But little kids never stay little. I, I, it, it's science, whatever. In comic books, science fiction, whatever. Kids never stay kids. They always grow up too fast. So this kid is growing. He, he every in five seconds he'll grow five years. Boom. But so now he's growing up. Why? Because comic book writers don't know how to deal with children. They deal with Connor Kent. It's like I don't know. And also, there's kind of a, a mistake in, in in the internal logic of the story. But it doesn't ruin the story. It's it's just like oh well, hand wave it. But uh, he's going back to the only. The Phantom Zone is like a limbo. Nothing ages. It's, it's supposedly like. You're trapped in the moment that you're there, okay? So, like, so, so, uh, General Zod and Ursa, they don't age, they don't get hungry, they don't get tired, they don't feel anything. It's just infinite, eternal nothingness and numbness. And, uh, to, uh, to the woman who, in the, well, I'll get to that when, when we get to that. All right. So now he's going back to one of the only uh, places made of material matter, which is the prison, Fort Ross. So he's going there, but he doesn't want to go there. Because that's where his parents are, and his parents are mean to him. And boy, are they going to be even worse to him once they realize that, uh, once the, you know, they, they know that he caused them to be trapped again. So they're just going to take it out on him. So he's crawling through everything, and he gets trapped. Now, he doesn't have his Superboy powers here in, in the Phantom Zone. Otherwise, they would all be able to escape. Now, this is Nan. Nan is the big, strong, dumb guy of, 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 uh, of the trio. And he's, like, reduced to, like, childlike intelligence below child like almost like infinite toddler like and he likes kids not in a bad way he's just a kid himself so he's the only one who's ever kind to him and he finds the boy and saves him now we go back to uh arc what's her name i, f I forget her name already Jeez, and she's having dreams of fire she's trapped in the bottle city of candor and i like they say that everybody in the bottle city of candor is damaged they have post-traumatic stress disorder i mean what you, you you your whole freaking city is captured by aliens and most of the population of the city was was murdered they only wanted a hundred thousand samples so they got rid of all the excess population took the city and boom boom you know, now it's now it's uh they're, they're trapped so she's just can't sleep at night she's having fits and she keeps dreaming about fire and she's talking they, they make her head of security there because of because of nepotism basically it and she keeps seeing this this the, the flame bird it's like a, a mix between a, a a phoenix and a dragon two mythological creatures and uh so she's like kind of like just she's taking it as like i mean if that's all that's wrong with me then how bad could it be and she meets the the religious people who like yeah, Arkvar. Her name is a uh, uh, Farah Arkvar, and they, they they call her over, and then she sees the vision, and they're like, "Yeah, you you are being picked by by the flame bird," and she's scared of him, but uh, as head of security, she's going to investigate what's going on, and they put her through all of these like rituals, and like I don't know if they brainwash her or if she submits to it, or if she, but it, I kind of get the feeling it's like a mixture of everything. Like she she's kind of like looking for. A, a path of, of like something that'll make her life less than miserable, something that'll give her hope. But at the same time, she doesn't trust it. You know, I, I, I don't know. I kind of like this feeling of like confusion and xenophobia in it. You know, I, I, she's going, she's tortured just, just like I, I couldn't even imagine living like in such a occupied, oppressed city as this, you know, cut off, totally isolated from, from the rest of your culture, you know, and, and are we are we going to be experimented on? Are we going to be murdered one by one? What's going on? So, she's like, "All right, I'll I'll do this." You know, she's a survivor. You know, if this whatever. You know, I I I just love it. I I know I'm rambling, but uh, I'm kind kind of confused, and I I kind of think that that's the the feeling that the that Greg Rucco was going for. He did a pretty good job. So now this is now like a like a like a penitentiary film, you know. All, all the inmates. So this is two different prisons. This is the prisons of, of Fort Ross. These people des deserve it. They, they're, they're criminals. You know, they, they, they went to extremes and tried to uh, attack the very Kryptonians that they were swore to defend. So they were put into the Phantom Zone. And, and Farah Akvar is a prison through, through no fault of her. She didn't do anything. She just existed in a city and aliens came in. So juxtapose, juxtapose. Compare the two different situations. And uh, Lore, Lore Er, Christopher Kent, is, is hiding and he's eating food. Now, 
He's one of the few people that needs to eat. Why? Because of the uh, the uh, the physics and the nature of the Phantom Zone. All the outsiders, meaning meaning uh, what's his name, General Zod and Ursa and all of them, they they just static. They their cells don't age. They, nothing. They're gonna stay like that. Which begs the question: How do they move? How do they think? How do they speak? But that's comic books for you. He was born in the Phantom Zone. So he needs to eat. He gets tired and and hungry. He needs to sleep. So, which begs the question, why is there food there? But I guess it's the prison with replicators or whatever. Now, here's my internal logic problem. If he doesn't age, if he doesn't change, if he's stuck frozen, how did she get pregnant, go full term, and have a baby? There you go. He shouldn't exist. So that needs to be addressed or the internal logic of the story needs to be fixed. But what do I know? I'm just a jerk. So now he's thinking about, a, he wants to escape and get back and, and, and live with Clark. It was the only time he was happy in, in his short life. Now he's aging fast because comic book writers can't deal with children. And he's looking at all of the uh, General Zod and Ursa and, and, the, and the other Phantom Zone criminals. They, 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 they scour the Phantom Zone and they get like what they call phantom technology. Like from either Krypton or other races that had access that are just floating and, and they're building these machines. And what are they doing? They, they found a, a Brainiac head and they're scanning it to see what's going on in Krypton. And this one apparently is from Earth because it's got pictures of, of uh, Superman and he's just, you know, he misses them. You know, he loved them. And he's like, the head activates. And what does he do? He puts on this thing and boom, he downloads all of this information into his head. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Now for, for whatever... Okay, that particular head, the, the one he was watching was from Earth. This particular one was from Krypton, and he sees, he gets a connection with, with Thara. Boom, their brains connect across the uh, the voids. I don't know how they didn't explain it, or if they did explain it, I, I missed it. And it's painful, and his screaming summons his parents, which is the worst thing for him. So what do they do? They just torture him. They just take it out on them. They're, they're punching them and beating them up. It's the only thing they have to do. It's the only entertainment they have. The only way to vent their frustration is to beat up this this poor kid. She's freaking out, and the religious people are telling her it's it's the flame bird. And the flame bird is 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 a uh, is plagued to live a lonely existence without its nightwing, its 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 lover. And so she's like, this is this is torture. This is hell, you know. I don't want to. I don't want to be alone. I'm tired of being alone. I'm cut off from from the rest of the world. I, I'm due to her mental scar. She she lost her husband and child. I I think I skipped over that. It, they would they were killed when when the brainiacs sealed the city off. So she's like, I'm tired of being alone. I I, I don't want to be alone. So she's using her position as head of uh, security to get break into like not forbidden places but restricted places, and she's making a suit. She she assembles a suit with the Phantom Zone protector on it, projector on it, and she's going into the Phantom Zone because that's where she knows Nightwing is the the uh, her destined lover the uh, you know that's the legend is Night Nightwing and the Flame Bird are supposed to be like this legendary like Barrett and Luthien kind of couple and that you know whatever and they're never gonna get together. She's like, well, I'm gonna do it. So she goes into the Phantom Zone, and she's freaking out. Why? Because according to this religion that she's not sure if she believes, if she's not sure it's true, the Phantom Zone is hell. So she's traversing hell. I, I, I love the science fiction to this, but I also love how it's like a mythological story. I, I just really dig this story. And she's closing her eyes. And she's like, I can't close my eyes. And she sees a trail of fire. She's like, that's got to be the path. So she finds this kid who's not a kid now he's he's an adult now because he keeps he keeps aging and she breaks in with these guns and they're like arc far she they recognize each other i guess krypton's not as as big as as a as a you think it is and she starts blasting them all now, i don't know if this is killing them but keep in mind it's also hitting the nameless phantom zone criminals and she's just fighting and the, she's head of security pointed by nepotism regular Regular Kryptonian citizen, and this is Ursa, who's one elite commando. So of course she's getting her ass kicked and get beat up, get beat up, get beat up, and you know. But she does have a suit of armor and everything like that. So 
here comes other guys that just taking her out and fighting her. She's got a Phantom Zone protector. It's on her belt. It's the way out. So Nan comes, pushes him out of the way, starts fighting them all like, yeah, Nan's got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nan takes Christopher and, and Farrah Ockvel and projects them back and then smashes it. So he, he chose a side. He's, he's choosing redemption. And here they go back to the bottled city of Kandor and they are going to be Flamebird and Nightwing. I liked it. Because of the uh, myth, the pseudo mythological story to it, you know, I also liked it because it gave me an emotional conclusion to to the Christopher Kent story that I really, really, really liked. Um, how long is this going to stay in continuity? Well, that that that's that's a DC Comics problem. <laughs> you know, they they always seem to do that. So I I don't know I don't know if this got retconned already. I, what do I know? But I, I enjoyed this. And here's the full credits. Mazi, colorist. I don't know if that's a person or a studio. Rob Leahy, the letterer. Renato Guedes, the cover artist. Will Moss, assistant editor. Matt Edelson, editor. And I, I really, really dug this. Uh, I don't... Is, is anybody an old school Superman fan? Like Silver Age Superman fan? I, I like Golden Age Super, Superman. I really like the Golden Age Superman. It was very, like, in your face, matter of fact. And it was very... Uh, real in, in 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 a way in that like superman would deal with like wife beaters and bad landlords and then then the war came and, and and things like that and then after the war i think i think society was was tired of realism and can you blame them and it kind of went silly in 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 the silver age you know you had like mixelplex and you know flame bird and nightwing and and, and imaginary tales and, and i and i and i think society wanted that you know the, I'm not, I'm not begrudging what people want that, that I, I wasn't born. I was born in the, in, in, in the beginning of the bronze age. So when things were turned in a little bit more realistic, so that's, that's what I'm used to. The silly age stuff is, is silly to me, but anyway, so does anybody know more about Nightwing and, and Flamebird, you know, could point me to a couple of comics to read so I could learn more about them. I, I don't know much about them, but there you go. And here we got some ads for, uh, I, I have a soft spot for these comics. Uh, okay, where is it? Urban Legend. The, these are the uh, Red Circle. These were like Archie comics. DC like licensed them out for a while. I, I know my friend Mike got really annoyed at what they did with uh, the Red Hood. But I, I thought these were pretty good. I, I like these. They, they seem to pop up every once in a while. Look at that. That is just a great costume. They pop up every once in a while, these Archie Red Circle comics. And it, it's funny to see that they, they were in DC for a while. But... Uh, I bought them, I enjoyed them, but I didn't get invested in them because I knew the license was going to expire and then they were going to get reimagined by somebody else down the line, which is exactly what happened. So there you go. This is Action Comics Annual number 12, 2009. I liked it and I, I read it. I just, you know, like I said, I, I, I bought a bunch of comics to round out and, fill, and plug the holes. I bought this a couple of years ago. I probably bought this like, I don't know, five years ago. And I just got around to reading it like a week or two ago because I still have 11 long boxes full of back issues to to read and as if that's not bad enough like like most comic book freaks I, i'm still buying comics so I'm, I'm i'm never you know i i, I need to take like a year off like right? maybe maybe i'll get hit by a truck maybe i'll be lucky get hit by a truck break my legs and i won't be able to work for a year and i could just lay in bed and read comic books wouldn't that be lucky wouldn't that be great i'm, I'm joking of course but anyway there you go thanks a lot guys um I, monday so I'm gonna. This is a Sunday. I'm recording this on the Sunday. I'm gonna. I'm gonna post this on Sunday. So tonight I have something to do. Tonight I'm gonna record tomorrow's video, and I'll 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 announce a date for the uh, for the first live chat. Also, either tonight or tomorrow. I'm not sure which. I'm going to do a test run of a live chat. So I'll do like a five minute live chat. That is not the live chat that, that I promised for 300 subscribers. That is just a test run. So, and I'm not even going to announce it. I'm just going to go live and, and see if it works. Okay. If you happen to catch that live, throw a comment my way, say something, let me know that everything's working. Let me know that the sound's working. So, so I, I, I know that when I do do the live chat, I'm, I'm not just sitting there embarrassing myself. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, and thank you guys. You are the best. Thank you so much, everybody. A lot of, a lot of, I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people and I'm really enjoying it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.